So now that we know the basic goal of Redux Thunk, how does it work exactly? Well, basically, Redux Thunk works by sort of tapping into the normal Redux data flow. That is, if we have our normal unidirectional data flow where our components trigger actions, those actions cause predictable changes to the data in our Redux store, and these data changes are then reflected in our components, Redux Thunk allows us to add a sort of fork into this loop where we can put the logic for our side effects, whether that's loading data or performing some other asynchronous operation. So what this looks like more or less is that our components can dispatch a regular Redux action, which goes straight to the reducer and makes the relevant changes to the store, or our components can dispatch a thunk that performs whatever async or conditional operations we want and then dispatches its own Redux actions based on the result of those operations. That might sound a little confusing, so let me give you an example of how this might be used in a React Redux application. Let's say that we have a user profile page and we want our app to load a user's data from the server when the page is opened. Now, without Redux thunk, the way we might do this is by putting our fetching logic in the component did mount lifecycle method or by using a use effect hook. And then once the data is loaded, we dispatch a load user success action with the new data that we loaded. Or if the fetching failed for some reason, we dispatch a load user error action that might set some error flag in our Redux store. So this works, but again, the loading logic doesn't really belong inside of our components. We should strive to keep our components as focused as possible on their purpose, taking data and rendering it. And here's where thunks come in. Remember in previous videos when we defined Redux actions, that Redux actions are just objects that contain a type property and perhaps some other data in the action's payload. When we dispatch a Redux action, Redux calls our reducers with this action, and the reducers determine what the state should look like afterward. So what a thunk is, is when instead of dispatching a Redux action, which is again just a JavaScript object, we pass a function to dispatch, and this function is where we put whatever async operations we want to perform, such as loading data. And we can also dispatch other actions or even other thunks from inside this function. We'll see just how to do this in a later video. So then, as I said before, thunks basically add a fork to our basic unidirectional data flow. Instead of dispatching only bare Redux actions, our components can also dispatch thunks, which perform asynchronous operations and can dispatch their own actions or thunks. And the point of all of this is that it allows us to almost completely remove our side effect logic from our components, thus increasing our separation of concerns. Now it's time to create our first thunk. Inside our to-do folder, let's create a new file called thunks. .js, and this is where we'll put the thunks for our project. So what does a thunk actually look like? Well, in Redux, a thunk is simply a function that returns another function, which contains the actual logic that we want to perform when it's triggered. So for our first thunk, let's do something fairly simple. We're going to define a thunk called display alert. So we'll say export const display alert. And what it's going to do is simply return another function that displays an alert on the user's screen. So we'll say alert, hello. So this is about as simple as thunks can get. We'll see later on how we can add a lot more functionality to our thunks, but first let's see how to dispatch a thunk. You might be happy to find out that the way we dispatch a thunk is nearly identical to the way that we dispatch actions. We dispatch them inside the map dispatch to props for a given component. So just as a demonstration, we're gonna open up our to-do list component and we're gonna make it dispatch this display alert thunk that we just defined. So up at the top, let's import it. We'll say import display alert from thunks. And then inside map dispatch to props, we're gonna define a prop that gets passed to our component and we're just gonna call this one on display alert clicked. And this is gonna be a function that doesn't take any arguments. And when it gets called, it will simply dispatch the thunk we just created. So dispatch display alert. And then up at the top of our component, in the props, let's get access to this on display alert clicked prop. And just for demonstration purposes, we're going to replace the on complete pressed method of the to-do list items with this on display alert clicked. So we'll go up here and replace on complete pressed here. We'll say on display alert clicked instead. And now if we run our app, npm run dev, and open our app up in a browser, if we click on the mark is completed button for any of these to-dos, we see that it displays an alert using our thunk, which is pretty cool. So the thunk that we created here didn't take any arguments, but it definitely can if we want it to. If we go back and modify our thunk to take a text property, for example, we'll say text, and then in this alert, we'll use backticks and say, you clicked on, and print the text. 
And then what we can do is go back to our to-do list component and add this argument into our map dispatch to props function like this. We'll say text and have display alert get called with text. And then what we can do is go back to our application and click on mark as completed. And we'll see that the text of each of our to-dos is now getting passed to the thunk. And those are the basics of how thunks work in a React application. Obviously, there are much more complex things that we can do with thunks, and we'll take a look at that shortly. For now, let's change back this component to the way it was before. So we'll delete this prop, delete this prop, and make it pass on complete pressed again. In the previous video, the thunk that we created was extremely simple. It was also synchronous, since the actual operations performed by our thunk were synchronous. However, most of the time this is not the case. In a real-world web application, we'll be using our thunks for many different asynchronous tasks, such as loading or updating server data. We're going to take a look at how to create thunks that do this sort of work for us. But first, we need a backend that we can query from our React application. Now, I've created a simple node server for us to use in this course. In order to use it, you just have to download the project. And once you've downloaded it, you need to navigate to that directory using a terminal and run npm install. And once that completes, you need to run npm run start. And you'll see a message saying that the server is now listening on localhost port 8080. So just to give you a brief overview of the server I've created for us, it's a very basic REST API that allows us to create, read, update, and delete to-do items stored in memory on the server. And I made it in memory so that you wouldn't have to worry about setting up MongoDB locally on your computer. So here are the basic things we can do to our server. We can send a get request to slash to-dos, which will send us back an array of all of our current to-dos. We can send a post request to to-dos with a payload that contains the text, and the server will use this text to create a new to-do in its in-memory database. It'll also add a new unique ID property, as well as created at and is completed properties, and return the entire to-do item, complete with ID, text, is completed, and created at properties as the response to our request. We can also send a post request to todos slash id slash completed, which will mark a given to-do item as completed and return the updated to-do item as a response. And finally, we can send a delete request to todos slash id to delete the to-do with the given id from our server's in-memory database. And this endpoint will send the to-do object that was deleted as a response. Now that we've seen all the endpoints of our todos API, let's hook up our React application to this server by using thunks. The first thing we'll do is open up our thunks.js file, and we're going to create a new thunk. We'll say export const, and we'll call this one load to dos, and it won't take any arguments, and it'll return an async function, which you're allowed to do here, and we're going to put our loading logic into this thunk. So before we implement the body of this async function that we're returning, there's something you should know about thunks. The function we return here gets past two arguments when the thunk is triggered. And those two arguments are dispatch, which we can use to dispatch other Redux actions from inside our thunk, and get state, which is a function that we can use to get access to the current state of the Redux store. These two arguments are quite useful. In this particular thunk, we're going to be using dispatch as a means to communicate to the rest of our application how the loading process is going. We'll see exactly how this works in a minute. What we're going to do first is open up our actions.js file and create some new actions that have to do with loading to dos. We'll say export const. And the first action we're going to create is going to be called load to dos in progress. And it's going to be the string load to dos in progress. And then we'll create the action creator for this one, which will be very simple. We'll say export const load to dos in progress. And it won't take any arguments. And it won't have any payload either. It's only going to have the type property. So the type will be load to dos in progress. So that's our first action. The second action we're going to create will be called load to do's success. So we'll say export const load to do's success. And the same thing here, load to do's success. And the action creator for this one is going to look like this. We'll say export const load to do's success. And this one is going to take an argument. That's the to do's that were loaded. And the type of this is going to be our load to do's success type. And the payload will be an object 
with a to-dos property that contains the to-dos that this action was dispatched with. So we have two actions so far. Finally, we're gonna create a load to-dos failure action. So we'll say export const load to-dos failure equals load to-dos failure. And then we'll make the action creator for that. Load to-dos failure, which won't take any arguments and it will simply return an action with the type load to do's failure. So now that we have those three actions defined, let's go back to our thunks.js file and use them in our load to do's thunk. So first, what we're gonna do is import the actions we created. So we'll say import load to do's in progress, load to do's success, and load to do's failure from our actions file. And as soon as we've done that, what we're gonna do here is as soon as our load to do's thunk is triggered, we're gonna dispatch the load to do's in progress action. In a little bit, we'll be using this to set an is loading property in our Redux store to show the rest of the application that the to do items are in the process of loading. So we're gonna say dispatch using this dispatch argument that we have access to. Dispatch load to do's in progress. And then we're gonna actually make the request to our server. So we're gonna say const response equals await fetch. And then the URL of our server, which should be running, http slash slash localhost 8080 slash to do's. And then we're gonna say const to do's equals await response.json. And this is all just the standard logic for making requests to the server. Don't worry if you're not super familiar with it. And finally, once we've loaded our to do's from the server, we're gonna dispatch the load to do success action that we created. So we'll say dispatch load to do's success with the to do's that we just loaded from the server. And we're gonna use this load to do success action in a little bit to put all the to do's that we just loaded into the Redux store. And now that we have all this loading logic, we definitely wanna wrap it in a try catch block so that we can handle the inevitable case where our fetching doesn't work for some reason. So up here, we're gonna add try, and we're gonna move all of this fetching logic into that block. And then we'll add a catch block that catches the error. And inside the catch block here, what we're gonna do is dispatch our load to do's failure action. And just for now, we're also gonna dispatch the display alert with the error we just got. And we're gonna modify this display alert thunk so that it just displays whatever message we give it.